Coverage of SHOT Show 2019 is brought to you by Olight. All right, SHOT Show 2019 here with Craig from Tops. Say hi. Hey, I'm Craig <laughs> from Tops. <laughs> So um, I came over to their booth and I looked at the uh, table and you got what are your what are your total number of new designs? Would you say? Uh, uh, Twenty eight. Yeah, I think we're at like eighteen, nineteen. Eighteen. So yeah. I got to tell you, there there is a full array of I mean like across the board of different types of things, including some very unique knives and some kitchen knives as well. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Let me hop the other side of the camera. Craig, give you a rundown on some of the new items. We got the uh, we've got the tops nada. So. This is an old Japanese style of knife. So nadas have been around for a long time. The way I think of this is, you know, 100, 200 years ago, what would somebody have used as an EDC knife around their house? You know, nowadays, it's something like this is your EDC, because you're opening packages, you're cutting down cardboard, you're doing things like that. This would be an EDC from back in the day. You know, this is uh, this is clear and brush. This is, this is gardening this is pruning this is uh, this is chopping down you know small limbs it's, uh, it's, it's all that and so uh, but what we, what we liked about this is with the Japanese they just have they have some really interesting designs just the, the, the cool things that come out of Japan um, especially in terms of knives you got kiradashis you got the samurai swords you got the nada you got all sorts of stuff right and uh, we had a, one of our friends one of the one of our friends sent us an old school nada, and then Leo basically said, "You know what? I I do like that. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take something, make it a make it top style, and and we'll make it happen." So we're looking at a quarter inch 1095. We got some of the the burlap micarta on this, and we're trying to decide between the black powder coat or the acid rain finish. I kind of like them both. I'm, 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 I'm back and forth, but uh, but yeah. This is something that will be released at some point this year. So, if you're a Topps Knives fan, you know that last year, um, in October, we turned 20 years old. We did a 20th anniversary text, or not a, uh, we did a 20th anniversary tracker, tracker number three. We did a one run, 500, it was a, it was a special steel, there were special handles, all that kind of stuff. And this is gonna be our second, our second in that 20th anniversary edition. So, same deal. We're gonna do one run of these, 500. Once they're gone, that's it. This is uh, this is the Tex Creek model. So, for any of you that that have been following, the Tex Creek was either the first or second knife that we released that had Black River Wash on it. It's been very popular. It's a great camp knife. It's a great hunting knife. Um, so it made sense to do this in a 20th anniversary edition. This is going to be CPM 154, not just your standard 154 CM. It's the, the powdered metal. Um, we've got a the, the handle I really like on this. We got black canvas micarta on the bottom. We got white liners, and then on the top we've got a red and black carbon fiber, which here in the dim lighting of, of Shot Show doesn't look that good. Once you get this bad boy outside, it looks real good. The sun. Once you get some. Sun Sunlight bouncing off of that. It's it's just it's a gorgeous knife. We're excited about these. They're basically finished. Um, the knives and handles are all ready to go. They're heat treated. They're you know the finish is done. We finalized the sheath design about a week and a half ago. Uh, we're looking at two pieces of Kydex here. Uh, red on the bottom, black on the top. And we're going to be putting this in on a, a burgundy leather dangler. So. A mix of, of some classy features with a knife that you can take out in the woods and, and beat on. So that one's pretty cool. We're excited. One run, 500. That's it. Next up, this one is uh, it's one that we brought to Shot Show just to kind of gauge people's interest, see if it was a design that uh, that people were going to like. So far, we've got some some pretty good feedback that uh, that this one's probably a go. That we should be doing this. Um, this was actually designed by a woman. 
So this is something that I'm pretty excited about. The, the knife industry is full of dudes. It's just, it's dudes everywhere. <laughs> lots and lots of dudes. There's a lot of women out there that like camping, that like hunting, that like survival. I mean, every single episode of Naked and Afraid has a guy and a girl on it. And I've seen plenty of episodes where the girls dominate, where the girl just, they, they get out there and then 21 days is nothing for them. Um, so this was actually designed by one of the females that was on Naked and Afraid, Amanda K, or AK is pretty much everybody, what, is what everybody calls her. It's kind of a kukri, kind of a, kind of not. Um, you got a pretty long blade on this. I think we're, I think we're right around a foot on the blade. We've got green canvas micarta. It's, it's uh, three sixteenths, ten ninety five. So for the size, it's pretty light. If we'd gone quarter of an inch like we normally would for something this big, it'd be real heavy. But this is actually not bad. Um, yeah, green canvas micarta handles, black liners, 1095. We got our acid rain finish on this one. Um, we're gonna kind of gauge the interest, see if people like it, and if they do, at some point this year, this will this will be this will be the first tops knife ever designed by a woman. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's cool. Okay, so speaking of naked and afraid. Um, so the SXB, a lot of people know that knife, a lot of people have that knife, we've sold quite a few. This is the next version. The SXB I think was a seven and a half, eight inch blade, pretty big knife, and it was designed by a guy named EJ Snyder. He's been on Naked and Afraid three times, he's been on, uh, he was on Dual Survival for a season. Before that, he was in the Army for 17 or 18 years. Um, wealth of experience, wealth of knowledge, just a, just a, and, a, and a real good guy. But he's also, he's also large. You know, he's, I think he's 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 you know, probably 250. Um, pretty, pretty big guy. And so the first knife was large. A lot of people said, hey, you know what, that's, that's, I like the design. If you made something a little bit smaller, I think I'd be into it. So this is kind of a, he designed it to be a companion to the SXB. <laughs> that's why we're calling it the SXS. Um, but it's still pretty big for a companion blade. We're talking almost a five inch cutting edge on this. Um, overall length, we're right around a foot. And, uh, but yeah, true to form, I mean, it's, it's got the same basic style and, and shape as the SXB. The handle has been redesigned a little bit uh, because as we shrunk that down, it didn't quite work the same. So we, we redesigned that, fits pretty well. I wear between medium and large size gloves. Um, Leo, the president, also puts this in his hand. Fills, the whole handle fills his hand. He's got, I think, XL sized hands. Um, so the handle's gonna fit whether you got big or small hands. 316, 1095, black linen micarta. Same basic finishes as the SXB. Um, only we're gonna be putting this in Kydex instead of nylon. Mac Ram, if you guys are, are into survival, you probably know who Mac Ram is. He is uh, really, he, this dude probably has more dirt time than anybody else on the planet. I'm pretty sure that last year he spent six months living in a hut that he built with his own hands. And I, I remember seeing him put something up that he wasn't gonna use any anything with a motor for like six months. So he rode around on a bike or ran or walked wherever he went. Um, the guy knows his stuff. This is his. Uh, this is the, the second knife we were releasing, designed by him. The first one was a little bugger, about that long overall, like a two-inch blade on it. A great little EDC knife. He wanted he wanted to, to go with something a little bigger this year, something that you could use as a uh, almost as a machete. If you're looking at this, you're probably assuming three sixteenths, maybe quarter inch. Um, we actually went with one eighth on this. So Matt Graham is. Uh, He's an ultra marathon runner. The guy spends a lot of time on his feet and he doesn't like to carry big heavy things around. And 
he he's he wanted us to actually go thinner on this, um, but we know our customers, and we're not going to do that because we'd get a lot of people bending it. Um, we'd get a lot of people trying to baton with this thing. We get a lot of people doing some some work that that will work on a thicker knife, but this is not designed for that. This is designed for clearing for clearing branches, for doing some light chopping tasks, doing things like that. It's not it's not a it's not a big heavy chopper. Think of it more like a machete. Um, really cool design though. I like that kind of leaf blade shape. The handle on this is is great because you've got this bulb on the back. So if you if you start to, to lose your grip a little bit, it's going to catch. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to use it like a machete, or you can choke back and get a little more leverage on it. So uh, I'm excited about it. Real lightweight. It'll be easy to carry long distances. So if you're looking for a kind of a larger knife, but not quite a machete and not something too heavy, this will be a really great option for, for the people that are into that kind of thing. So this is the other prototype that is that is a maybe. This is something that we're kind of we're, we're putting on the table. We're going to see. We're going to gauge people's reaction. We're going to see what they think, and then we're going to decide whether or not to make this. It's not going to be cheap. So you're looking at. Um, I think that this is 27 or 28 inches overall. Um, the blade is like 15 and a half or 16. Um, it's a big piece of steel, and so it's 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 going to be it's going to be a pretty expensive piece if we end up making it. It is 10.95 quarter inch. You got your we got the black powder coat on there. We got the two tone handles. Um, you know you got a handle that's made for multiple positions, two handed if you really need it. Um, so if you're looking for something to just destroy stuff, uh, if you're if you're if you're into the uh, you know if you're into the the larger weapons, the, a sword, if you will, this is going to be up your alley. If you're looking for a woods tool, I'm not sure you're going to want to be carrying this around. You put this on your on your hip, and it's going all the way to your knee. So, you know, we'll see we'll see how this goes. It's a really good looking piece. Um, you know, we just want to see if there is actually a market for this, if there if there is that kind of interest in a in a large martial arts type tool. So, signed by Johnny Tai. Anybody who knows who he is, he's got a lot of martial arts experience, which is why we're looking at at, at basically a sword here. Um, really knowledgeable guy. Uh, yeah. So, let us know what you think. Should we make it? So. About six or seven years ago, we released a knife called the Fieldcraft by the Brothers of Bushcraft. It has been our most popular model by far for the last, I think, four years. And it's just, it's, it took off. We've sold a ton of these. We make it in two different steels. We make it in several different finishes. We make it in like eight different handles. We sell it with Kydex or leather sheath. Um, I mean, there's just a ton of options with this knife. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from people that, that love it, that, uh, that want a bigger one, that want a smaller one. We decided the smaller one was probably the way to go and uh, that's what we're looking at here so this is the Fieldcraft 3.5 is what we're looking at about a three and a half inch blade hence the 3.5 this is uh, Leo basically took the Fieldcraft design shrunk it down a little bit we removed the Shango notch um, that's one of those things that people either love or hate uh, I never had a problem with it but a lot of people just they just didn't like the feature so we removed that and shrunk this down to about a three and a half inch blade. It's real comfortable ergonomics. I mean, anything that you would, anything that you were, that you like the bob for, but you were like, that's eh, just maybe just a little too big. This is perfect. You know, I mean, a three and a half inch blade will do 90% of your cutting tasks. So we're looking at 530 seconds, 1095, slightly thinner than 316s. Um, you know, we've got our, our modified Scandi grind on it, like like is standard for our Scandi grinds. Um, a lot of people will say that's not a true Scandi. We understand. That's why we call it a modified Scandi. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna argue semantics about whether or not old Scandis had a had a secondary bevel. Some of them did. Just for you purists out there, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, we call it a modified Scandi grind. Basically, when we when we clean off this edge here, it's sharp. But that's 
that's a pretty weak edge. And with the way people use our knives, they chip them, they, it just, it wouldn't work. So we put a secondary bevel on that. What it does is it stays just as sharp, but you get a little more meat behind the edge. It holds up to harder use. Um, you can do more than just make feather sticks with it, basically. So that's why we do the modified scanning grind for those, those of you out there that always wondered. Um, but basically, I mean, it's just a shrunken version of the steel craft. Great looking knife. Uh, this is going to find its way into a whole lot of kits. The, the plan for everything we're showing you just now is to have it released this year. Last year we had some uh, we, we had some some struggles keeping up with with demand. Um, so there's a few models we actually showed at the last shot show that aren't out yet. Like the Dicer 8, it was here at the last shot show. Um, we've got a lot of that dialed in. We're we've ramped up production. We're getting things moving quicker again. Everything that I just showed you should be released this year throughout the year. I don't know, I, I, the only ones that I really know is the Quickie, that's gonna be released in about a week or two. Um, the Rapid Strikes, basically the stuff that's left over from last year is the stuff I'm getting out first, and then right after that, we're pushing out the, the new stuff. So, the, SX, the SXS will probably be one of the first ones, April, March, April timeframe.